Well, first of all, I want to start by thanking Bill Blankenship, obviously. And being a former football player and someone who's worked in athletics for 21 years now, it's amazing the number of hours that a head football coach and his staff puts in. And a decision like this is never easy, obviously, because it affects so many people outside of the head football coach himself. We have many assistants that are affected by this, their families, and, and the coaches have to take care of their families. So I want people to be sensitive to that. It's not an easy decision, and the president and I, we've uh, gone back and forth about this over the, over the season and just came to the conclusion that it was time to go in another direction. So we met with Bill this morning at 9 o'clock and informed him of the decision, and we're moving forward. I met with the student athletes. Bill was able to meet with the student athletes. I think that's very important that the head coach gets to meet with his student athletes because he's the person who's responsible for these young men being here, and we have a couple of the young men here that, that will also speak, and they're in the back of the room, but it's mostly about them. And I think a lot of times that the student athlete is the person or the, some of the people that get lost in a situation like this. And so we want to be mindful of them and in moving forward, trying to find a, a coach who can come in here and basically pick up the mantle and get us back to the level where we were a few years ago. What was the overriding factor in swaying you to make this decision? Well, it's a bottom line business, unfortunately, in, in college athletics. And obviously, it's about education. It's about what you instill in young men and young student athletes as a coach. Uh, at the end of the day, we're all held accountable for winning as well. So basically, the 5-19 and 19 in the past two years and, and being 4-12 and 12 in the conference, those were the, the, the overriding factors. Is this a decision where you honestly didn't know until after the last game of the season, or was it decided before that? Well, we, we wanted to give Bill every opportunity to be successful. That's the way I'll answer that. And I think, and you know, you, you get a lot of pressure for different comments and people uh, weighing in on it, but we never once considered removing Bill during the season. We wanted it to play itself out. And, uh, and again, we ended up 2-10, and 10, so that's, unfortunately, that's where we are. Can you well, take us? Can you take us inside that meeting and when you told Bill, did, did he say anything? Did you give him a chance to say anything at the start of the meeting or how did that play out? Well, it, I don't want to get too detailed with a, a meeting like that, but obviously Bill was able to speak, the president and I and, and Bill, we all said different things. And, um, and Bill's a professional. He's a great man, as you've heard, and you've, you've been around him even more than I have the last four years as he's been the, uh, the person over the program. And uh, it, was, it was a meeting that, that went well. He gave us our opinions on what he thought we needed to do going forward. And I won't share those. He may share some of that with you when he speaks to you. But um, I think it was a positive meeting. Do you have many coaches in mind already? Um, and did you have some coaches in mind already even before you made the decision? Well, the, the old saying is that athletic directors should always have a short list regardless. And with Danny, it was a different situation. And, and now we have this. So you always have to have people in mind. Uh, but we're going to um, hire out a search firm like we did with the basketball search, and that firm will help us in the development of a, of a good short list as we move forward. When you hire a, a search firm like that, you tell them some maybe things you're looking for in a prospective coach, correct? What would you tell them? Yes, I think on this level, um, uh, coordinator experience, a lot of experience in college athletics and college football, Coordinator experience will we'll probably have interest from former head coaches, some sitting head coaches. So, uh, but I start with just a lot of experience on the college level. With the landscape of college football as it exists and what many predict will exist in the next couple of years, where does TU fall into that category? They're not obviously in the member of the Big Five Conference, but what sort of coach do you think you can draw to this position in in what could be the future of TU football or uh, similar schools of that in that regard. Well, I think uh, you know this school has a lot of history and legacy, especially in the past decade. And so, as far as what we want going forward, we want to have a winning program. We want to be bowl eligible to start with. And even though we sit outside of the Power Five per se, we still have access to being and playing in some of those games, depending on where we end up. So, uh, eventually, we want to get back to competing for championships within the conference first and foremost. I think. That's what, um, at TU, that's what we thrived on in the past, and I think that's what will carry us going forward. What kind of time frame are you looking at as far as hiring a new coach? And talk about recruiting a little bit, too. Do you 
personally made contact with the guys who were already committed and wait for the new staff to do that? We've been talking about that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to try to get in contact with the people who've already committed, the guys who've already committed after before the day is over. And that's uh, personal contact. I don't know where we are with the NCAA rules and how I can reach out to them, but we're going to make contact with them. Uh, your first question, I'm sorry. The time frame. Oh, the time frame. We, we, we would like to move as quickly as possible, but you have to be obviously very detailed with something like this, and you don't want to move too quickly. So in talking to the president, we definitely would like to have someone hired by the holiday break, if possible. What kind of financial commitment do you think it's going to take to get a new coach now that you've made the move with basketball to pay, pay what he's getting? Yeah, we're, we're talking about that. I think we just like with we're moving into a new conference and having gone into the new conference, we've had a lot of conversations about those types of things. And so I think um, the commitment will be there. We haven't defined exactly what it is, but it also depends on who we're get, going to get as well. And so once we get into that process and kind of see what the market drives, then we'll talk a lot more about that. But you're confident that uh, when you find a guy that you want money won't be an issue as far as hiring him? I think I don't. It, it depends on who you're talking to. Obviously, money is important because it's a high risk, high reward profession, especially for a football coach. But what we have here is a program that's been very successful, and so when you have that, I think coaches look at th those types of things. We have an attractive job because other coaches have won here. That's very important, and so I think that will will help as far as our pool is concerned. Whether the next coach is successful or unsuccessful, it seems like this program has to find a new coach every couple of years. Are you comfortable with hiring somebody that you may be in this same position talking about trying to find another new coach, regardless of whether he's successful or unsuccessful? Are you successful? Are you comfortable with having to make a decision once every two, three, four years? That's a good question. That's a, that's a great debate for an institution like this. I think I, I'm comfortable with it particularly if we have success, and you just have to prepare yourself for that. And that's just been the uh, the cycle that we've had around here many times before. So you have to always be prepared. Um, and, again, going back to the Danny Manning situation, that wasn't predictable. Nothing's predictable in this in this business in a place like this. So, um, But I, I'd rather have it where we're successful. If I have to replace a coach in two or three years for success, I'll take that every time. Doug Gray, was, was Bill – Outside of the wins losses thing, which is obviously overrides everything else, was he pretty much as good a fit as Tulsa could have asked for in every way except that one loss record? Well, Bill covered a lot of the the, the checklist per se. He's an alum. He's been in this community a long time. He is, and you can ask the staff members. He is someone that you want to be successful, that you like working with, and so um, I enjoy working with Bill. And so that makes it even tougher, a decision like this. How tough was it to watch the last two seasons of football here uh, with the way things transpired as a whole? Well, I think it was tough for everybody. And it's just something that we're not accustomed to and, and haven't been accustomed to in the last decade. Again, playing in eight bowl games, I think, in the last eight, I mean, uh, last 11, 12 years and competing for conference championships. It was difficult to watch. And, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to turn that around. You mentioned a couple of times how difficult the decision was. Uh, what, in your mind, when you think back, was the most difficult part of it? I, again, the, the most difficult part in, in changing a football coach is how many people are affected. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's not like basketball or soccer or another sport that just has two or three coaches maybe and, and people around it. Uh, a football staff is just a vast it's a, a huge staff, and you have nine other assistant coaches to start with, and you have high school relations people, you have director of football operations, and so on and so forth, graduate assistants. So you look at how many people you're going to be affecting, and we go on trips. Uh, you know, we have family members are with us. So it's a Bill's family oriented, and this is a family oriented university. I'm family oriented, and it's just tough because all that has to change. So I think that's the toughest part. Do you think you have to make a decision quicker with this hire than you did replacing? Uh, Coach Manning, because we're still in football season and recruiting is becoming a, a big part of the situation right now. I think recruiting is very important, and so that's why and, and you look at the recruiting calendar, we were set to have, I think, visits over the next couple of weeks. So uh, you, you want to be able to salvage some of the recruiting if you can. How tough is it to recruit to a school like this with all the academic prestige that TU has that some other schools don't necessarily have to deal with in the conference? I don't think it's hard to recruit here at all. Um, I think that's one of the things that, and that's been debated too, and and especially in the admissions office. I think what we have to do is we have to do a good job of 
of uh, keeping the guys here when they come here. I don't, I don't think we have a problem as far as admissions and getting kids into school here. Your experience at Vanderbilt, does that help you in the scenario that you're facing right now because of the academics and athletics? Well, I think so. And I've been at other, you know, Missouri and, and, and the SEC is kind of an outlier along with Vanderbilt. And, and Michigan was kind of like that at Big Ten. But, you know, we can't do anything here to compromise our academic standards, and I never asked that, and I didn't come here for that. So we have to work within the framework that's set up here. Well, uh, yeah, at least two guys in the league make over two million dollars a year, and I think eight of the eleven were making over a million dollars. I mean, is that have you all talked about that and the fact that you the commitment going forward is almost assuredly going to have to be a lot more money? Yeah, we we talked about it, and we know the averages. And and one thing about it is that who you're talking to, they will know the averages. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you have to be prepared for that.